my wife, uh, who is, let me give her a little credit too, going to graduate next week from Vanderbilt Law School. So I didn't want to mention that she was finishing her law degree because I didn't want to blow it up. And I, I, maybe I'm a little bit early, but she is scheduled to graduate next week. But she just texted me. She's listening. Um, what happens one day if Dylan Mulvaney decides to switch his gender back to he because gender is fluid, she's asking me. Does everyone arrested for the crime of misidentifying him get out of jail? How do we keep up? Do we get flipped back and forth? I mean, this is pointing out the profound absurdity of this. And ultimately, Democrats recognize it, Buck, because if you try to apply the same rules of transgenderism to race and you just say, well, you should be able to be transracial. I'm a white guy. But if I want to identify as a Latino or a Latina, Latinx, I guess they would say, uh, woman, why can I identify as a woman, but I can't identify as Latin or black or, or Asian or whatever else, right? The entire uh, sort of kabuki theater of this uh, collapses as soon as you start to apply the logic to basically anywhere other than gender. And as we've talked about on this program, Buck, Gender is actually far more real than race is, right? Because many people out there, they get their DNA analysis and they find out, uh-oh, I thought my family was was all uh, you know, from Italy or I thought my family was all from Africa. And it turns out that that's not true at all. You're Elizabeth Warren and you're just pretending to be something that you aren't. And by the way, she was never uh, really punished for that. She got away with the whole thing. So she's actually... I mean, she managed to elevate herself dramatically um, from where she would have been in, in academia all the way up to being not only a senator, but a, a presidential candidate without that without that X factor of a, a racial advantage that she created for herself. Elizabeth Warren would not be a name that anybody knows. It's just obvious. It's, it's quite clear. And your point about what we can do about this, I've thought for some time that the only way to end this madness. Now, the Supreme Court, I think, in about six weeks or so is going to say that uh, racial preferences in college admissions are unconstitutional, which is really the most obvious thing imaginable, right? I mean, th this is as straightforward a situation as you can find um, looking at somebody and saying, you know, you are black, this other person is white, or this person is Hispanic, and this person is, uh, you know, Asian American, and I'm going to give one of them something better than the other person. That is the definition of racism. They can try to change it in a million different ways. We all know this, right? But if you want, what's going to happen is the private institutions are going to find ways around this. That's why they're dropping SATs. This is why, you know, they, they are already trying to figure out to make it such a holistic process. They're going to turn these universities into like a country club situation. Who gets in, who doesn't, eh, whatever we say. How do you know? Eh, it's kind of a feeling we get, right? Now, the racial makeup of the schools will stay exactly the same, by the way. that So it won't be a quota, but the numbers will all stay the same. I can guarantee you this. Harvard, all these places. Now, how can you deal with this? Well, make them tell you that you don't count, to your point about transracialism, you don't count as. On, on what basis? You're self-identifying on all of these forms. And, you know, write an essay about how, you know, you really feel like you've established you know, your, your, your Inuit or your, your Eskimo heritage in high school in a way that's profoundly affected your life and you are now a Native American. Like, go with it, right? I mean, just run with it and see what happens. What are they going to do? They're going to say, I mean, all, if they try to press you on this one, say, okay, let's look at my 23 and me, right? Find something that you got, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, 2%, uh, it says 2% African. Uh, I got a couple other things in there in low percentages. Wait, you're an African-American? I mean, two percent. I, I mean, look, I, I would. Uh, you're an African American. See, this is my like. Are they going to say sorry? You don't qualify because you have to. What? I know it's the drop of blood standard. That's what, I was making a joke about this uh, recently. My sister got her twenty three and Me or whatever it is, and I don't know what exact uh, you know replica I'll get. I need to get it done again. She was one percent Middle Eastern. So can I start saying, assuming the same thing is true for me, as a Middle Eastern man, I believe you could say as a black man, and if somebody pressed you on it, if somebody pressed you on it, how would you be able to prove if you said, hey, my great, great grandma was uh, was black, like at what it really it does point to the absurdity of the diversity and inclusion myth. Are they going to give you a blood test to determine whether you qualify as black or not? 
And if they're doing it based on skin color, there are people who identify as African-American who are very light skin. Oh, no doubt. So it can't just be, well, you're too, you know, what, what, what are they going to do? Right. I mean, how do they actually police this? It's super racist because they're going to be like, you're not dark skinned enough to class qualify as being black. And then you're like, well, do you need to hold my picture up next to somebody else who you are counting? Now, I'm just going to say if one this is very, it's by the way, it's very Saul Alinsky. This is using the tactics of Alinsky against the Alinskyites um, because you over you're overwhelming the system. You're finding the weaknesses and then you're basically jamming up the gears. If you had enough people, you know, enough. Uh, you know, white and Asian kids applying to college claim that they actually identify as a an advantageous race, which is the reality of college admissions in America today. I don't know how they would, you know, be able to 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 change or or you know, sift through this. I'm not really sure what would happen. That's the only way. And the reason that it doesn't happen, I think, is one, people haven't really thought of it, but also they're afraid of like being shamed, I think, by their peers for gaming the system. The system's already worthy of shame. It's already being gained.